p.m. today. Um, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded and videotaped. Um, it doesn't look like there's any members of the public present today. Could you go closer to the microphone, please? Oh. Yeah, could you put it down? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So it doesn't look like we have any members of the public present today. Um, so um, I would like to mention that um, um, on the topic of the approval of uh, November 17th, 2015 uh, minutes, um, that the second announcement um, needs to be amended. Um, the sentence that reads, Mr. Mr. Nagy um, informed Ms. Coyle that he may be resigning. Um, the sentence should read that Mr. Nagy informed Ms. Coyle that he is resigning. Um, Hannah, I had already talked to you about that, but the, those minutes were already amended and approved. But at that meeting, um, you had stated that he might be resigning. That the, right. And that yeah. at the following meeting, you wanted that, well, not, it wasn't at the meeting, but another time you wanted it to be amended, but the minutes were already amended. Oh, it wasn't at the meeting, it was at a, it was at a telephone call. It was during, it was during a telephone call. And then the next meeting after the initial meeting was canceled. So you had mentioned on the phone um, for me to, to um, state what I just did. Okay. Well, in any event, like Nate, you resigned. Mm -hmm. I got that officially from his letter. Mm -hmm. Let's see that I read at the meeting. Right. Um, December 22nd. Oh, okay. And, okay. So, thank you. All right. So, um, all right. Thank you.
So then we'll put these on the agenda for our next meeting. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. Is that old enough? All right. So I would suggest that everybody save these minutes for our meeting in March. That way Patty doesn't have to redo them over. <coughs> thank you. Easy enough to do, but thank you. Sure. So we'll approve days in April. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is snow removal. How did everyone's winter go this year? How um, much snow to worry about? Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, so I'm welcome to our meeting. Yes, I see. We already did the public portion, and we usually have the public sit um, in one of those chairs. So welcome. And did you want to respond um, with something for the um, for the public, or you're just, just here? Curious. Thank you. Yep. Glad you're here. Glad you're here too. Thank you. So we're going on what's not removed. Yeah, Santa wanted that on the agenda. Yes. Um, so yes, um, we were very lucky this winter. Uh, we did not have as much snow. Um, I did notice that um, something that may benefit all citizens um, is if, bus if businesses and residents could sweep the salt and sand from the sidewalks. This is very important because um, you know that's something that is a falling hazard, and um, for many people, uh, the salt and st sand that remains on the sidewalk. Um, so this is something that um, if city businesses and uh, residents could do this, <coughs> especially along Main Street. Bridge Street, and I think Elm Street is fairly good as far as I know. They do have some sand, so I, I guess I would also include Elm Street as well. Um, and if, if Mary could pass that along to her constituents as well, that would be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, May I ask? Mm -hmm. okay. Is there a, a defined legal obligation on snow removal? Yeah. Well, there, there's there an ordinance. Isn't. You have that ordinance yeah. about that ordinance about snow removal within, within 24, 24 hours. hours. That's snow removal. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's anything about sweeping. Right. And, and I wonder whether, because I, I think that's exactly right. People aren't as aware that that residual of sand and salt mm -hmm. can be the more serious sweeping <coughs> hazard. And, whether that should be articulated um, as part of an ordinance? Oh, I don't know about that. And that would be we a, had enough of problems that would be enough trying to get people problem. to go and do their sidewalks full month. And all the complaints and people complaining that the city wants people would do their, their sidewalks, the plows would come in again. And you're looking at elderly people they had to go back out and shovel again. Many people have come forth about these complaints, and I agree with you about sand and salt and so forth, but... I think like people it. aren't as conscious, well, conscientious about it, you know? But well, it is, it's like a slip and fall situation. I mean, I can hear bicycle tires now skidding, and you hear that sound yeah, when you know, I know. the sand is underneath where do you find this problem? Um, on Main Street and Bridge Street, and I did see it also on Elm Street. Um, yeah. Because I'm down street every day, 
Uh -huh. And what stores are you talking about? What stores? Um, let's see. I recently, well, I know um, just uh, along Main Street, along Main Street itself. Um, yeah. Is it after a storm? Um, yes, after a storm, it's the residual sand and salt. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it, I found from past winters that sometimes the sand remains on the sidewalk for a, you know for many weeks. You know, um, sometimes a, a month or two, even after there's not any more snow. Hmm. So. We've had such little snow, thank goodness. I yes, know. thank that goodness. Alleviated so. a problem with yes. curb so. cuts not being so. shoveled up, especially. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so um, this would be good to watch, um, just in case there are any more <coughs> storms for the winter um, and so I thank you on that um, and let's see um, would um, the member of the public at all like to say something about snow removal well um, after being homeless for three years and uh, dealing with the situation downtown where there were lots of banks that I had to jump over. Mm -hmm. I actually broke three flimsy walkers. That's why I got this tank. Um, and I even noticed uh, able-bodied young people at certain points on Center Street where my shelter was. One night I saw a 22-year-old that would have brought me, and maybe brought him to the ER. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was right in the middle of Center Street, just half a block up from the police department. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Snow banks can be very treacherous. And yeah. also, um, just quickly, I often go to the Northampton Market, the convenience store up here. Mm -hmm. um, the access all around there is horrible. Mm -hmm. um, especially from the few times that I came from McDonald's. Um, it's, it's very, very difficult. You've got to get over a hump and then and the, another hump to get in. I can manage, but uh, I can oh. see where it, it would be dangerous for other folks. I guess. So, so coming from McDonald's, there's a sidewalk, then you're going to go into the um, road. Yeah, I yeah. cross the street and right at the corner of Corns and whatever right. street yeah, McDonald's that is on, that uh, it's very difficult. Right to by the bank, by the Florence Savings Bank on the corner? No, no, no. This is in Northampton, right down Con Street, six blocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. The little convenience store. Oh, okay. So yeah. is it from the road? get onto the sidewalk is the area that's difficult is that weird yeah there's a there's a crosswalk and uh, a hump and then um, to actually get into the parking lot it, it's another problem that is there a storage curb cut there, problem Patty? yeah i believe there's a curb cut on mm. on each side is there a curb cut there if I if I come on if I'm coming up from Con Street, I can get into the store, but if I go on the crosswalk, then there's a hump. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, crosswalks on Elm Street near Smith College Campus Center. Um, 
Originally, I believe Leticia was going to speak on this topic. Yep. Leticia um, will speak on it, and she asked that it be put on the next agenda because she wasn't able to be here today. So um, she does want to cover that. So um, it can get moved to um, April. Um, yes, um, we. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's all right for me to mention. Um, we did attend, um, we did meet at Smith College in January. And um, we talked about possible changes um, that Smith could make near a, a specific crosswalk. Um, and so we had thought of um, better signage and better lighting. And I would be, um, I look forward to hearing from her um, next month to update us further on any further ideas um, that she has that may benefit um, the college and the city. Okay, when well you're saying crosswalks on Elm Street, mm -hmm. near Smith College Campus Center, Mm -hmm. Because I was telling you before right. that I saw you coming down these steps. Is that the area where you're talking about? Um, let's see. I wasn't near any stairs. No. The campus center, the entrance to the campus center doesn't have stairs. So it's, there's, not a, there's not stairs. There's it's a crosswalk. Are you talking about one that has a, a walk? Light or the one down by Hanover that has no um, light for pedestrians. I know I'm confused. Oh, there's, there's a crosswalk directly in front of the campus center, mm -hmm. and that's the crosswalk, at least from what I understood from Leticia, is where she got hit. Mm -hmm. Does that one have a walk for pedestrians? It does. So somebody ran a light in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because if they walk like that, then the street light must have been red. Mm. And there are streetlights right on that crosswalk. And so where is that located? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, the, the campus center is the building that seems to be squashed between other buildings and it's very modern looking. Yeah, and yeah. it's okay. uh, right white. by John and Greenhall, you go past it on the left hand side. If, if you're um, heading to Northampton, right. yes. it'll be on your yes. right. left. You, you're about talking about the right building, yeah. Right. So you're talking about right there? where that crosswalk is, that's where she got hit? Yes. Yeah. Uh, may I ask, mm -hmm. does the college control the street? I know. It's the, yeah. it's, I believe that would be the city. I mm. agree. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. college doesn't control yeah. the street. It has property lines that are set back from the curb. Mm -hmm. Especially in addition to her. Yeah. That Smith College is pretty good because they've done quite a bit as far as the roads and so forth mm -hmm. because of some of the Smith College people who have gotten hit on their bicycles and they paid for the work to be done. So um, signage and, and lighting, mm -hmm. I, I think the city should meet with them and something should be done. Yeah. Yeah, could, could I say both this mention of the yeah. difficulties in the pedestrian environment by the market and the crosswalk Mm -hmm. um, there's probably a larger domain that all this fits into, which is really a look at the whole pedestrian system in and near the, the town center is just, I mean, just one part of the map we could look at. Um, but when we talk about you know, possible program ideas for 2016, I think some kind of broad survey to identify the major problem areas mm -hmm. um, is something that would be useful to consider. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And I'll park the vibrant sidewalks to make um, Northampton a walkable, movable entity. I mean, it's all part of that as well. Yeah, and, and we know one of the bottom lines that we'll hear are the very limited resources Correct. available for maintenance and repair, but those have to be strategically targeted. Thank you. So I think Patty will be something to this commission 
um, bring or send a letter to the Department of Public Works in regards to the concerns of that site and work something out with Smith College. We don't really know it is an educational institution and they do help out the city like with the roads and so forth and putting the crosswalks in. You saw what they did with the brick. They paid for that on the roads. But until we know what happened to her and what the conditions were, we don't know if there's anything more that anybody can do. I wish you'd actually, a red light. Yeah, I wish you'd actually look at that crosswalk and make sure right there was a street light, there was a red light, there was a crosswalk light. Make sure that that's all at that particular crosswalk. And all I don't know. I mean, right. when did she get hit, Penny? I want to say it was before Christmas. I remember reading about it in the paper, but then she brought it up now. One of our meetings, yeah. She got hurt. She was released um, without injury. And there's no there's no lights there. No, there are street lights right there on the cross. Or go through light. If you I, I I you know nothing more than really what well, Leticia had said at the meeting. Right. You said you saw it in the paper. I saw, yes, I saw it in the paper. It's just a very brief accident. Okay, so it didn't say somebody will start it going through a red light or anything. No, just a, yeah, there's, I don't know, yeah. So I think, you know, we don't really know what happened there, but I would also say that, you know, we can, add, once we find out from Leticia what happened, um, and, um, and from there, that the commission would want to sort of piggyback on the transportation commission, like or DPW or somebody to say, you know, we, this was brought up, we believe, it's a problem if that's what we're finding, um, and, and, and then they, right, and then they can work on it. But that the support would come from us, just like many times the disability commission will piggyback on some other issue and to support, like a handicapped parking space that somebody wants. We would um, support that. But I, you know, I, I would um, like to know more about that accident Nature. that happened before we. Uh, you know, I did ask Leticia if she had a police report, um, and I can't say that she um, yeah. had that or knew that. So, but that would be, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's Leticia's topic, and I think she can inform all of us so we can know more. Yes, and I'm I'm working on this with her as well. So, yes, yeah, so I'll be we'll be talking to each other. And, um, so she'll inform us more at the next meeting. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, let's see. The next item on the agenda today is um, the Disability Commission brochure. Um, and Ruth has made photocopies of the brochure for everyone, a draft that we can all work with. Is it just packs them down? I'm sorry, you didn't make more copies. It's because you're shop. <laughs> <laughs> I need one more. I don't have one more. Um, Chris, and I would you like to share? Would you like to share? Thank you, Chair. Oh, all right. And you and I can share. Um, that's okay. Thank you. Would you like a copy, sir? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll get it on the way out. Okay. This is Thank a you. very rough draft, just so you know, Mark, it, it's, it's, there are duplicates of different things just to be placeholders to fill in the paper so that the spacing would look right. And I apologize, but my printer print's crooked, so, but it's just a draft. <laughs> um, I put this together at this point, my memory is failing me. Um, I went to another city and took some ideas from them, and I don't, I can't remember which city it was now. And we handed them out so people could look at them. Um, I had another idea that we could talk about too. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of people I know that are doing brochures are just doing, they're a front and a back, about this size, they're like cardboard. Mm -hmm. But there's only the front and the back instead of a six section like this. That's something else we might think about. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you want to go section by section, we're just I'm looking for ideas. And then what I'll do is I'll put another draft together based on the ideas we come up with, mm -hmm. and then we can look at that and fine tune it. So one of the things that I had suggested was like just a single, similar to what you just said, um, that it's two-sided, it's not three, you know, it's not it would be a brochure like this. Print. Right. It would be a lot cheaper to print something like that. And I think we need to stay, when you have um, these printed, I think we need to stay away from names of people I because, it, was because it changes and, you know, we don't want to exactly. be baseball. Um, I agree. But, you know, there's yeah. things. Like, you know, we can have the city seal, it doesn't have to be really huge. Um, right, and, and I'd like to spend some time going over this. Yeah, and thank you, Ruth, for putting this together. And I know that we keep saying, oh, we'll do it, we'll do it. Um, right. And I have a copy that I didn't bring because I And Chris did have some good ideas, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, we've accomplished things that we could put in here, like what some of the um, items that we've done. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's but I don't like the idea about these names. Yeah, they change us. And then, uh, you know, it, and it probably would be that the ADA coordinator mm -hmm. could be contacted with the phone Because people number. come and people go. Yeah. That's, they're on the website, too, um, just so people... Well, that's know. different, yeah. Because once somebody leaves, you take it off the website. And this should also come out because you're going to be retiring. Mm -hmm. And we don't even really know where the ADA, ADA coordinator slot's going to be for the department. So all of that should come out, right? What's that? ADA coordinator. Well, most, most likely it's still here, so. But I think that if people agree that we can do a two, just a one sheet, one third of a sheet, um, probably the heavier card stuff that you've talked about. Uh, this, this with, be very much smaller. I think yeah, with limited information, but I think so much of this is redundant Where that it's going to fit in that side of that. So thank you for at least starting that. And I think that yeah. maybe exactly putting and she's right. The meetings are not at five. Yeah, I got and that just yeah, that just yeah, changed. changed the draft. Um, would you, by the way, mention to Joanne when she does when she does the Penn Street Chronicle? She's still putting five in there. Well, this is only the second, the first time that we met it. Exactly. Oh, I thought the last one was four too. I didn't make the, the last one the day we had our average Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we get rear ended. Total and stuff. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, this is yep, so that, that'll, 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 of the Disability Commission yeah. created yeah, by City Council, well, mm -hmm. yeah. right in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also in the middle of the front. Yeah, well, we don't need it in the back. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's back sheet's fine. Just cross the back sheet off completely. That back sheet's completely fine. Yeah. Okay, so we can give it to you, and you can do a draft, and then at the next meeting we yeah. could. Right, Chris, and if you yeah. think of anything, Chris, just email us. So you don't want any of yeah, your staff contacting you? To me, it all folds back no. to one place. No phone number. No phone number. No phone number. Which is the ADA should be the guy mm -hmm. on what this is doing. I don't know the the language in terms of the creation of the commission, but the commission's mission is the important thing here. Um, that the ADA coordinator functions, you know, in relation to the commission is important but generally for municipalities there ought to be an overview compliance statement about the commitment to non-discrimination the commitment to provide accommodation and effective communication and that i would suggest should be the the heart of the mission that's more and then incidentally yeah we don't want to list names because names change exactly. but we want to list the avenue by which you know information is published and available and how people could either contact the ada coordinator although it's understood that that in the foreseeable future you know may change but right because we can't put a coordinator's here. name on it because patty's leaving mm -hmm. and we're getting a new director and we don't even know if 
the new director is going to be the ADA coordinator or if it's going to be another department in the city. We don't know yet. Yeah, and, and it should be obviously notified. All departments should know who the ADA coordinator is so that people can contact the ADA coordinator or they can contact the, the commission in, in fairly. Could you email us, Chris? Yeah on what you just had stated about what I know you do Ruth but I would like to see sure. what she's talking about I think that would be great because I like Thank what you. you had stated yes um I had wanted to ask you you mentioned that we should focus on non-discrimination um, effective communication and then there was something else you mentioned yeah we, we have some examples and I can give it to you they are uh, a general compliance notice related to the ADA, but the important thing about it is that it provides um, basic information so even people who may not identify themselves as people with disability could see, oh, you know, there is an opportunity to, um, you know, request accommodation or request effective communication services. And I'll, I'll mm -hmm. Right. I will give you some examples of that, which that we can right. yeah. things that have been adopted by other municipalities. And I'll send you what I've got from the other cities that I looked at. I'll send you that stuff too. Yeah, well, the thing that you'll find for the most part, we've talked about this, only a relatively small number of cities and towns have actually kind of looked again at that ADA obligation and, and really refreshed their their self-evaluations. Mm -hmm. um, some have done it for the most part. Um, it hasn't been done yet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, also, I was thinking of possibly making the, the symbol uh, for um, the handicap sign um, a little bit smaller than the about if we go to a two page, we might not even use that if we've got this, the city seal because we don't want to take up a lot of room. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I <coughs> thought we were, did you mention that you wanted to keep the city seal? Or well, I think that the city seal and if we're putting the handicap um, emblem, uh, for lack of another word, that they, they're way too big for there. Mm. Especially if we're only going to have this much space. Yeah, yeah. Like with the city seal, bring it down smaller, yeah. mm -hmm. like we do on our minutes throughout the city, like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. we have the, um, that smaller also. Yes, so, I think it should be smaller. Now, I'll, um, I, I'll find some other uh, symbols as well. Again, people see this in terms of physical accessibility, which right. is only one dimension, communications, and there are right. some some symbols for that. And also, this is a symbol of accessibility. Yes, it is. You know, we're trying to... It's supposed to right. be a symbol of accessibility, and um, that's something that I wanted to talk about today. Um, I feel that we as individuals all have abilities and that's something that um, that's something that we could really focus on for this year and for following years as well to really focus on each individual's abilities of this commission and people in the city all individuals have abilities and, and that could be something that is very seconded Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I, I thought of um, introducing the term um, abled individuals because although we have certain needs as people with disabilities um, that um, we might need assistance with, we are individuals with abilities. So I would like to suggest um, introducing the term um, when speaking about people with disabilities that I, I or the person speaking am also an abled individual. I am an abled individual and I live and work and function in society. 
And you're talking about spending the whole year on that just one? No, it's just, it's um, hopefully, a, it's a term to help, it's a term I to help it. improve communication with people uh -huh. and improve people's perception of people with disabilities and affirm that all individuals have abilities. Okay, see, I agree with that. But today when I was talking with Chris, I think we have a big, big problem mm -hmm. out in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's your private vendors, your private clubs and that, mm -hmm. because they don't have to follow, okay, the laws on disabilities. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at that big picture here. Mm -hmm. If you go, say you're a member somewhere in a private club, mm -hmm. they do not have to follow the law of somebody being disabled, mm -hmm. okay? No matter if it's visible or not visible, Mm -hmm. All right, but mostly all of them do have to be handicapped accessible. I think the American Legion does mm -hmm. in Bay State. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about people of being hearing impaired. They don't have to have this, mm -hmm. okay, which we spent quite a bit, quite a bit of money on the system, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's like, so I think we need to look at the big picture here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. when you're talking about people's disabilities, mm -hmm. visible or not visible, we need to look at these private entities mm -hmm. who don't have to do it. So I would say we have work to do. Right, like churches don't need to either, but I'm gonna say that most churches are, are ahead of everybody. Then they are, I, I, I agree with you, Patty. I mentioned that to Marianne, in terms okay. of voluntary taking steps forward um, you know faith communities have for the most part been the leaders in, in bringing in they for lots of reasons some have and, and some have not but some have adopted effective communications technology have, have looked at it accessibility but I guess and I have a somewhat different take on this I think the language of disability is the language of law I what I'm concerned about is we are so far behind in, in you know, some of the basic dimensions of compliance with the law. What we had talked about and were disappointed because we hoped the Attorney General might participate was trying to convene a number of the municipalities to say, um, let's take a fresh look at this broad mandate of the Americans with Disabilities Act take a look at uh, frankly i don't know what the history here is in northampton i joined this commission just a few months ago judy is now an applicant to be a member i don't even know what our own history is and i don't know what our, the outstanding pieces are that need to be done i know when i roll down the street what i can see is a particular problem or a particular event but in, in widening that perspective I think for the challenge for this commission ought to be first of all to get this 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 picture of the status for the whole whole city yeah. um, and then we will find you know more things to do than we have resources to do them but we can at least see if we can come to some agreement about an order of priorities mm -hmm. rather than one person who had a problem in a crosswalk I'd like to know from the police department exactly. what whole pattern of pedestrian incidents might we have. Mm -hmm. So to um, so do an overall, okay, sorry, an identity, identify what what the what it is we all need to know, and then approach that rather than and I'll say how we have been functioning is here's a situation we deal with that situation, here's a situation we deal with that situation. And so I think in a broader perspective is what it is it that Northampton needs in terms of um, accessibility and dealing with um, um, the needs of persons with disabilities. I mean, yeah. you know, sidewalks is one <coughs> huge um, thing to be identified, problem to be identified. Yeah, so there's many of them. And we have out in the rural areas, we don't have sidewalks. Mm -hmm. We only have roads. <laughs> yes, exactly. So how do you accommodate people with disabilities and wheelchairs 
They have no access to roads, except for new developments, which is mandatory that they have to put sidewalks in. So, for quality of life, when somebody wants to come out their door in a wheelchair, it took me seven years to get Sylvester Road repaid so people in the elderly could be able to come out of their home, come onto a road, and get out there in their wheelchairs and enjoy part of life. Seven years. That's a long time. And again, I think talking about resources, I mean, at least you can identify it and then who's going to come up with the resources, but right. at least here is what needs to get done. And I'll just refer to um, sidewalks again. That's you know been a concern um, for many years, and the money that um, the DPW used to have, where <coughs> they would be asked, "What sidewalks do you think should be repaired?" Um, so at least some of them were taken care of. But there are a number of sidewalks that really are deplorable. Never mind just somebody walking down it, but somebody in a um, wheelchair or using a walker or using a baby stroller, there's mm -hmm. multiple problems and hazards. Mm -hmm. What so, were you saying about the church? Oh, I can't see, I can't go to the main St. Louis Van Seaton on King Street. There still are no pews that I can sit in. Yeah. So I don't know. Chapel. I've brought it up a couple of times. I brought it up to the priest and I brought it up to one of the one of the groups that's there. Is that the same priest that is that your church? No, well yeah, they, they go to both churches. The chapel. And what did you say? Um, well, they're thinking about this is, I don't know, two because years Because I know they have handicapped accessible because I've been in there. Oh, yeah, they have a ramp. You can get in, but if, you, and, like, if you're in a chair or something, you're fine. I can't sit with a wall in front of me because my legs don't bend enough. But on the front row. has a wall right in front of the front rows of pews. There are no pews I can sit at in that church. Oh. Um, they're talking about bringing down some of the pews from the, what do you call it, up on top where the singers used to be. But it's never okay. happened. So, for big masses like Christmas, where they don't have a mass over at the chapel, I'm out of luck. Hmm. Well, how come Patty nothing's done with that? Well, because I never heard that it was an issue. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not on a committee there for um, accessibility, but uh, but she talked with the priest who goes back and forth there, correct? Well, that was Father John. Father John's gone. We have new priests um, now. All right. So it could so, be on the list. And I mean, why couldn't they just chop the, the wall? <laughs> they're not going to do that for one person. I like an enunciation. It's that first pew yeah. that's open. Right. Yeah, there's no, no pew, no wall in front of a section, and it's perfect for me. So, and we like the chapel anyway, so most of the time we're fine. I, I, I think that the thing is, almost anywhere we look, we will see at greater or lesser degree a reflection of the same set of, of issues because the, the progress has been slow. I think what the city needs to do is, you know, to really take on its role as a municipality. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of that to me is, um, is a plan. Uh, and the way we operate, because we do a lot of this for higher education now uh -huh. for the state, is pretty basically simple. You get a map and you get a camera and then you just, you go down your major ways and you take a photograph and you look at the relationship of a deteriorated piece of sidewalk here versus a deteriorated piece of sidewalk there. Um, you ask for testimony about where people are having specific problems. Mm -hmm. We want accident information, all of that comes to bear. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other thing is I'm sure as Marianne has fought look, lonely fights often um, to you know in the budgetary process no doubt we've got a huge capital arrears because every municipality in massachusetts has uh, and the question is where are those resources going to be allocated we aren't going to get the disability issues to suddenly leap over um, you know lots of others but they generally need to be um, raised to a higher level because unless Northampton is very different than other communities I've seen, is that you know that very often accessibility and the disability issues get pushed as just further down the order of priorities no. than we would like to see them. Oh, um, yeah, and I'm going to say if, if there's something that comes up in terms of a 
issue with um, accessibility um, that you know the city has responded for us um, you know like if uh, I'll use in front of um, Northampton City Hall um, when we were in front of City Hall the sidewalk was deplorable and you know Back there. people's heels were getting caught in the cracks and um, you know we wrote a letter on behalf of the Commission to the mayor and you know that was taken care of and now it's a very smooth um, walkable uh, sidewalk so the city responds I guess as necessary um, but it would be great and I'm, I'm seeing this sort of as maybe this is what we want to take up for our whole programming um, you know how we come up with a program usually for every month or a task or a real uh, mission that this seems like this is what we should be doing that this let's look at what Northampton needs in terms of um, ADA compliance or you know you know go out and start look at, well, I mean we have to have a game plan um, but to, to do that and I think that would be a very beneficial um, way for the committee to, to function and to this this is our priority mm -hmm. um, that's just my yes. opinion that, thank you for stating it that way. That's that, that's why you know I joined the commission because this is what we've been doing for a lot of years in different places, and you know it ain't rocket science. You know I don't think it's to point a finger at the city of Northampton like whoa you're not doing this, but here's what we see as the commission that needs to take place in Northampton. So here are the situations and how can they be rectified, and then it's who's going to come up with. The resources or what's the priority for um, items to be handled and, and taken care of right and, yeah. where do you, and what grants would be available mm -hmm. yeah I, I think, think pretty with, multi -purpose. with the Commission on Disabilities of what I've been told that there are resources out there of grants and cities can apply for the grants correct uh, community development block grants. I don't know what traditionally the city does with them, but that's been you know, a significant source in Capital many municipalities because it's tied to. And then, of course, the question always becomes: of, Are there times when there are you know, state or federal level infrastructure where we're not getting a, a, a lot that's flowing at this point? But but one thing it do. Part of the point of having a plan is to have things in place when right. opportunistically there there is a grant funding opportunity um, but um, community development block grants are probably have been the, the probably the single most significant over times to to really target certain certain areas there awesome. are other things which have to do with speaking to the um, the businesses in town which you have obligations under Title III of the ADA. Um, it's as simple as, you know, we have a lot of restaurants in town. Well, one of the obligations under access is you have at least a proportion of tables that are accessible. Um, I mean, Chris. A lot of people don't know how to do that or even know that the obligation is there. Plus, the fact is on Florence Road. We've been waiting. <laughs> waiting which really upsets me, somebody who's totally deaf, of a site visit, and we have not heard back. And is this would you say that again, Marian? <laughs> That's the one with the tree. Yes. And Patty was making a site visit, we haven't heard ever since, of a site visit or anything occurring. Right. And this man, his life is really bad. Mm -hmm bad situation and I think yes it's a pine tree it's a pine tree they're saying because it's a city tree it's a good pine tree well it's a fern okay I'm talking about somebody's life somebody who cannot hear and the visibility so we need to have a site visit right now we're, we've been waiting for a site visit for Patty on hand and Avenue Correct. Oh, I have a report for that. Yeah. Right, and it's like never got an answer back. I placed a call in today as a city councilor to find out what was the problem here. Weeks and weeks of not being able for the commission to go on site, but it's been since last year no site visit on Florence Road. 
So we'll resurrect that again. Resurrect it. What? We'll resurrect that as an issue again. Because I know that I had checked on like the, with the tree committee. I know you did. And that it was um, a good tree. And that's, and that some, it was petitioned before and it was denied. So the tree was going to well, stay. we're looking at a fern versus somebody's life. It's a fern. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Does this citizen need a, a better sidewalk or driveway? Um, no, I would want the tree taken off. Right. That's what he wants so he can ask us out of his driveway, right, Patty? Yeah, and for better visibility because of being hearing impaired. Okay. We went on site and it's bad. Mm -hmm. Yes, it looks like we are. Let's see. Yes. Um, well, thank you. Thank you all for your ideas. Thank you very much. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, program ideas for 2016. No, I'm not. Yes, please. I have two that I wrote down. First of all, I don't know if, if this is possible or not, but I believe the police reports are public record. I would like them to automatically send us a copy of every police report that involves a disabled person, any type of disability, so that we can um, get ideas of areas that might be a problem, certain crosswalks that will be a problem. Um, I don't know if that's possible or not, but I'd like to find out because I believe police reports are public record. So it's just a way for us, again, to get more information about certain areas, places that could be problems. Um, now, are we really? talking about a police report yeah. for the whole city? For Northampton, yeah, or for any place that we're concerned with, which would be the whole yeah, city. I think you're going to talk to me, Chief Ruth. Um, I think police reports are private information because it, um, it, it contains statistical information, but it also can sometimes can contain injury or health information or other personal exactly. information. I so, said I don't know, but I thought police, once a police report was issued, that it would become public information because I could only get any police reports on my next door neighbor if I wanted to. Oh, excuse no, me, sir. Sir, I didn't have a chance to make this announcement <laughs> during the meeting. Um, so that was just but one. I wanted to let the, you the know that we have a vacancy. I don't think it changed Jody Casper. If you would like to join the committee to go through this whole city on your own accident, you're welcome to do that. Are you talking for the year of 2016 or how bad? Oh, All not right. that, right. just going forward. Okay. Not when? Yeah. If we decided to do it, whenever we decided to Could do it. Could we hold on a cross conversation All right, right. now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, know. there's, there's too much story. talking going on. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, I just needed to talk. I um, didn't hear it. Sir? Sir, if you would like to attend our next meeting, um, it is April 19th at 4 p.m. I will come back from Hawaii if I have to. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Safe trip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Safe trip. Well, those uh, F-15s are held in the back seat. <laughs> but uh, thank you, sir. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. You're folks. welcome. Bye. Bye. The other idea I had, um, we've been talking about publicity and um, we want to get information from the public about things that they feel that we need to do, things that we, areas that are problems. We need input. Mm -hmm. All the other commissions in the city have public hearings. Why don't we have a couple of public hearings? Mm -hmm. Get the word out there, invite the public to come in, tell us where there's a problem. Not only will that give us advertising and make us more visible, but it'll give us some ideas of where there's problems. Those are the two things that I think. I think um, we have had some hearings. I think Patty, as our ADA coordinator, we had the hearings with Strabas and all of them. We opened it up mm -hmm. about the transportation and so forth. What we had at Council Chambers, it was full house. So we have had public hearings. 
and they were well attended. So I, I don't know what kind of input you're looking for, or if you want another hearing again, mm -hmm. on, on what? I'm just, in general, what the public thinks is a problem that we need to know about. You know, come in, stand up, and speak. Um, I can't get into restaurants. Um, I can't um, use a public restroom. Um, just, I'm just grabbing. Well, know, then why don't we just put a thing on channel 15, which is free? Put a little note on it. Come to the meeting, mm -hmm. right? By advertising it, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Okay. Or, if, or you could even put something in the Gazette. I mean, if we're going to be looking, and again, we haven't decided if it's what we exactly. want to do, is that we want to sort of get to the top and hear, here's what we need to identify. Right. And doing something by getting people's opinions mm -hmm. is a way to filter what, exactly. what, you know, we can all go see what needs to be done, but what are people in the community feeling that we're really lacking, or maybe there's some great things that are, you know, done. I, I think that there is a problem a definite problem of showing the visibility that here, here we are, we have a commission on disabilities. I know many people who have said to me, where is it? Mm -hmm. You've heard it. Yeah. yeah. And so somehow we need to get it out there. And I don't know if the senior center, I think on the TV that you have out there, do you place anything on it about the electronic bulletin board yeah, yeah. We, it right now don't have somebody putting together our cd which lists all of our um, programs that are coming up um, so right now it hasn't been updated how about on channel 15 because that's we could okay. put that in that can go in for two weeks at a time mm -hmm. you know come to the commission on disabilities come and voice your concerns mm -hmm. You know, as a community, we want to work together with everybody. Right. You know, like you were saying about your sidewalks or anything like that. Right. So we got to get it out. I would ask that the Gazette come and interview the Commission on Disabilities of what we're all about and what we want to do, how we want to move on and what direction. And it wouldn't hurt to see if we could get a reporter to come into one of our meetings. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good Yes, it is. And it, again, I would suggest the process ought to be get a focus for what we're going to do over the current year. I agree. Put a campaign label on it, whether it's, you know, ADA, 25 years, whatever it is, give it some kind of a label and then have the interview be in relation to that. There you go. You know, and then you have people come because what you're going to present has a particular theme. Um, yeah. Might decide to do all at once, but I would suggest that we break down between what are the actual municipal functions and issues that go on there. It may be at another time in terms of the, um, you know, the, you know, the businesses, the shopping districts, the downtown district. Mm -hmm. but, but taken in pieces so it's identifiable and people know what you're going to talk about at yep. a particular time. There we go. And then I'm sure we could get um, mm -hmm. um, targeted interview and coverage from the Gazette. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a lot of work just getting restaurants to do the braille. It was very difficult. It was not easy for us to get restaurants to open up and do braille. Yeah. and the large print menus, but we did it, didn't mm -hmm. we? It took us a while, but we did it. Patty and I would be going to stores and so forth. Mm -hmm. A lot of work. Well, and Daniel Cuso opened the doors. He helped us. Mm -hmm. Well, even getting a bench placed is yeah. just not an easy task. Yeah, we got benches. Is, <laughs> we got them up there. You know, the doable patients. But that was I mean, a biggie. I mean, it doesn't prevent you from trying to move forward with um, different um, mm -hmm. perspectives. It's sometimes difficult, yeah. but you pursue it because you know it's the right thing. Yes, and the law. And the law. I do have that rights to see the law. <laughs> Which, you know. <coughs> All right. 
Um, let's see. True parents, I can see. Program. Um, does, <coughs> okay, new business. Um, does anyone have any topics that they would like to talk about concerning new business? I do. I have two things. Um, um, one. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no. I see. Um, so um, we, meaning the uh, Northampton Senior Services, is offering our 14th annual Health and Safety Fair. And in the past, we, meaning the Disability Commission, has had a table at it. So um, my question is, is the Disability Commission interested in having a table again? And if so, then I have an application here, which would it's from 10 to 2, excuse me, on May 12th um, here at the Senior Center. You're right, and if somebody can't do it, I mean, you can have a table with our beginner on it mm -hmm. and have the information right there. So it would be great to have this, our brochure, whatever it ends up to be available. That, uh, when is that May? May 12th. Open to the public 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. and we usually have um, 65 to 67 different vendors at it, and it's a well attended um, program. I've worked the table the last two years, but I can't do it this year. I have another commitment that day already. Mm, I might, I may also have a commitment. If I don't, I, I can attend. So I will, I will let you know. Plus the fact is, I think with the banner there and the information up on the table, we could also say if you have any questions, you know, talk. Yeah, visibility would be great. Exactly. You know. so. um, and the second item I had was about um, Hampton Avenue crosswalks that was brought up to us. Um, so in talking to Dave Valletta, from a senior civil engineer at the DPW, um, what he was talking about, we did hear some of this when we had our um, Zane uh, come to the meeting who brought up the whole topic of where a crosswalk would be placed on Hampton Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, what David was saying was that um, they usually do mid-block crossways at the crosswalks. They don't just stick them anywhere. Um, that's been their policy. And now Maggie Chan would be the person um, at the DBW that I would be working with the new engineer. Transportation engineer. Um, so I have yet to talk to her because I just got her name today yeah. um, and talking to David. That um, there, the city DPW is looking at Brookline Mass for guidelines because they have criteria that um, may not always be that you have to look at the um, mid block crosswalks. So they're coming up with criteria here in Northampton. Um, Transportation Committee is meeting tonight that a crosswalk for Hampton Avenue is not on that agenda. Um, so they're actually going to do, be doing a study of pedestrian traffic. Um, they don't usually do those in the winter, so that's something that's going to be set up on Hampton Avenue um, to see the um, amount of back and forth um, because it has been recommended that Kirkland um, Avenue, which is going into the parking garage, is where the crosswalk could go. So um, then I got an, uh, an email that uh, with some additional information um, that they were going to be looking at vehicle pedestrians and then the vehicle speeds and volume on uh, Hampton Avenue. Um, and as I said that they were going to be um, doing this, they don't do it in the winter so they'll be doing it. Yeah, because so. Ryan O'Dowd and I talked with him after we had that meeting about Hampton Avenue and mm -hmm. the residents coming in. He said that they have talked about it, um, transportation and parking, right. and that it was going to come back again. Yeah. So, so they're going to do a traffic study there, and they're going to put Hampton Avenue near the top of the list for traffic counts. Okay. Right. That's okay. That's good. So anyway, that that's the um, update for uh, Hampton Avenue. Well, that's good. Um, is the transportation meeting at five tonight? It is tonight. I don't. I don't no, transportation, at, that transportation four. commission at four. Oh, it's at four? Oh, all yeah. right. So it's not on the agenda tonight, so. All right, uh, all right. thank you, thank you. And also to pay for new business, um, everybody who 
This on the Commission on Disabilities, except for Chris and except for Ruth, Ruth has to take or reapply again in September. Everybody else, Gay just did hers. She got approved by city council. She had to go through the process. And then you have to take your uh, conflict of interest law test. She's done that, that certificate's in, and she just got sworn in. Everybody else on our commission needs to reapply to get back on this committee. Right now, mm -hmm. you're way overdue. Mm -hmm. Every member is way overdue. So, so what you have to do is reapply to the mayor's office. So um, Leticia knows that. I sent an email. Um, no, not, I'm sorry, I take that back. Why would she have to? I, I'm taking it back. Um, Leticia was just appointed. Um, it was Jim Winston. So he has already contacted the mayor's office. And Hannah. So Hannah, you need to. And um, Ruth is in September. Right, so you'll have to remember that for around September. And Chris is all set. And you're all set. I'm all set, but I do need to know how to take that conflict of interest. Pardon? I thought you did. Oh, you gotta take that. There's some online. It's yeah, right online. online. You do it right at home. I thought you did it. No. I don't think I did. But you usually remember better. Than that. <laughs> um, you can contact the right city clerk's office because that's where your certificate goes. Right? It goes to city clerk. Yeah. So you can check with um, the city clerk Wendy Massa to see if it was you submitted that certificate. I have his email. I got his email, right? Have I emailed him? Was it? If you mean email me, I'm pretty sure I did not. Take you know what? Because at home I do have the. Um, what do I want to say? The link to the test. Yes, I have the link. Okay, I can send it to you. And you just keep taking it over. If you don't pass it, you just keep taking it over until yeah, you, you pass, pass it. Yeah. If you get the question wrong, and then you, you print it out question. at home. And bring it down to Wendy Maza. Kathy, okay. did you print a certificate? Right, and mine printed and we couldn't get gays printed. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a plug in that where you go to print the certificate. You have to hit, you normally you hit a tab when you put in your name, right. hit a tab. You have to use the enter key, otherwise it won't work. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's awful. Bad programming. There's um, is, <clears throat> is there a link to the website? Or do you still have the opportunity to take the test here? Yeah, we are. Yeah, so you call ahead and change our computer room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the event, there's a class being held. We don't want to hold you up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. But you better get your application filled out because you got to go through the whole process again of being interviewed by city councilors. Mm -hmm. Oh, things have changed. So if you need a copy, I can um, download a copy and mail it to you, Hannah. Yeah. Oh, would that be easier? Um, yeah. An application. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's after you get approved by the appointments and evaluations, mm -hmm. then you take your test. Okay. 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 After I'm approved. All right. And then you print out your certificate and then bring it to Wendy. And she swears you in at the same time. Um, thank you. Makes sense. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So we just have Hannah and Jim, right? Yeah, he has to be reappointed. He actually said today that he contacted the mayor's office. <coughs> okay. Um, does anyone else have something that they would like to talk about today? An agenda item? All right. Um, well, I would like to announce that our next meeting is April 19th at 4 p.m. And I thank you everyone today for attending and all of your information and the topics and the agenda items 
that we have talked about. Thank you for. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Thank you. Yes, I make a motion that we adjourn. We the second. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You need the first one. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you, Ruth, for making a motion. At 5.14 p.m., Ruth has made a motion to 